This is Minister Robert Mixon coming before you once again. We're coming to bring you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And we're located at 947 Beaver Dam Road in Harper, South Carolina. And the order of our services, Tuesday nights at 7.30 p.m., Friday nights at 8 p.m., Saturday morning service at 10.30 a.m., afternoon service at 3 p.m. every Saturday. And you're always welcome to be with us in our worship service. Now the Bible tells us in John 8, 31 and 32, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. Now, if you don't know the truth, then you're not free. You are in bondage. 2 Timothy 3 and 7 said that men are ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And the Bible says you shall know the truth. 2 Timothy 3 and 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. All right, the Bible said all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine. This is the only thing profitable for doctrine. For reproof. Mm -hmm. For correction. For correction. For instruction in righteousness. All right, instruction in righteousness in Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, He answered and said, It is written. It is written. Man should not live by bread alone. Man should not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall man live. John 5 and 39 tell us something. Now remember, all scripture, everything that's written in the scripture. It was inspired by God himself. Search the scriptures. All right, get your Bibles and search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. In them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. They are they that testify of me. Now, we come, just came out of our fall festivals which was commanded of God according to the scripture. Now we want to call your attention to the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. And we want to begin at the fifth verse. And we want you to read along with us. Now remember, the Bible said, Search the scriptures, and Apostle Paul admonished us to prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Now, I don't want you to agree with me, but we want you to search the scriptures and see whether those things are so. The things that we are preaching and teaching. Behold. I have taught you statutes and judgments. I have taught you statutes and judgments. Even as the Lord my God commanded me, mm -hmm. that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it. Right. Keep therefore. The Bible said, keep therefore. And do them. And do them. For this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations. All right. This is how God people get wisdom and understanding from keeping the statutes of God. And you will find an outline of these statutes in the 23rd chapter of the book of Leviticus. But mainstream religion are saying that these statutes are done away with. And we're going to show you one of the scriptures that they use. Colossians, the second chapter. 
And let us begin at the 16th verse. Now remember, Isaiah also said, line must be upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. And they are saying and teaching and preaching that these days are done away with. Let us hear what it said, Colossians 2, 16. Let no man therefore judge you in me. Now here Apostle Paul is speaking to the Colossians. Let no man therefore judge you in me. Let no man therefore judge you in me. In me. Or in drink. Or in drink. Or in respect of a holy day. Or in the respect of a holy day. Or of the new moon. Of the new moon. Or of the Sabbath days. Or, or of the Sabbath days. Which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. All right, now the Bible said these holy days and the Sabbath days, said these are a shadow of things to come, but the body is Christ. Now, they use this scripture to say that these days are done away with. But Apostle Paul, we're talking to the Colossians, saints of God that were already observing these days. Amen. And he was admonishing them not to let anyone judge them in doing this. And the reason why I said it was a shadow because now think about a natural shadow. When you see the shadow, then the real thing is coming on later. Amen. Now these feast days are shadows of things to come. And each one of God's feast days and appointed time points to a step in the plan of salvation. But the world is saying that they are done away with. Mm -hmm. But what it said in Matthew 5 and 17. Matthew 5 and 17. Now remember Paul said, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. What does it say in Matthew 5 and 17? Think not that I am come to destroy the law. All right, now this is Jesus himself saying, think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. All the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. All right, he said he didn't come to destroy but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. For verily I say unto you, verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. All right, is it not one jot or one tittle in no wise shall pass from the law to all be fulfilled? All right, until all be fulfilled. And heaven and earth is still going on. Amen. It is still going on. And God's laws and statutes are still going on. But what's happening with the world. Let's go to Mark 7 and 7. Mark 7 and 7. And it tell, tells us exactly what's going on with mankind, with the religious world. Mm -hmm. How be it in vain do they worship me? How be it in vain do they worship me? Teaching for doctrine. Now these are the things that they're teaching for doctrine. The commandments of men. The commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God. All right, that's what they're doing. They're teaching for doctrine, the commandment of men, the thing that man has set up. But the thing that God has put in place, they are laying it aside. Mm -hmm. What else is it? Mm -hmm. You hold tradition of men. Holding on to the tradition of men. As to washing the pots and cups mm -hmm. and many other such like things you do. All right. Holding on to the tradition of men, but laying aside the commandments of God. Mm -hmm. Now these feast days, the Bible said they, they represent the plan of salvation. And this is how we get our wisdom 
and understanding. Now the fall festivals starts with the feast of the trumpet. Now let's go to Isaiah 58 and 1. The feast of the trumpet. Cry aloud. Now the Bible says cry aloud. Spare not. Spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgression. Show my people their transgression. And the house of Jacob their sin. And the house of Jacob their sin. So when this piece of trumpet comes along, it is pointing to the future. Amen. It is pointing to the warning that God has for the world. Amen. Warning the nation. And also, it points to the second coming of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 4. And let us begin at the 15th verse. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 15. For this we say unto you, mm -hmm. by the word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We which are alive and remain will not prevent them which are asleep. Talking about the ones that are in the grave. Because when Jesus returns, there will be people, saints of God, that are still living. And then there are saints that are in the grave. What does it say? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven. With a shout. With a shout. With the voice of the archangel. With the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God. With the trump, talking about that trumpet. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the feast of trumpet points to Jesus Christ coming back and also it points to the first resurrection which is the resurrection of the saints. What does it say Revelation 11? And let us begin at the 15th verse talking about this piece of trumpet which represents the coming second coming of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of the saints of God. And the seventh angel sounded. All right, and the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven, mm -hmm. saying, saying, the kingdoms of this world, the are kingdom of this world, are become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ, mm -hmm. and He shall reign forever and ever. All right, and the Bible tell us that this was at the seventh trumpet, the last trumpet. When he said the kingdom of this world has become the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So this trumpet represents something. And the Feast of Trumpet has passed already and the next fall festival or appointed time is the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. And if we go through that 20th chapter, of Revelation, beginning at the first verse, each one of these feast days pointing to a time in the future. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. I saw an angel come down from heaven. Having the key of the bottomless pit. Having the key of the bottomless pit. And a great chain in his hand. And a great chain in his hand. He laid hold on the dragon. Lay hold on the dragon. That old serpent. That old serpent. Which is the devil. Which is the devil. And Satan. And Satan. And bound him a thousand years. And the Bible says bound him a for one years. thousand years. So this is what the day of atonement is pointing to. A future time when Satan the devil and all of his demons will be bound for a thousand years. And this is necessary to make way for the next festival, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. Continue to read in Revelation. 
But it's and it. cast him into the bottomless pit. Cast him into the bottomless pit. And shut him up. And shut him up. And set a seal upon him. Set a seal upon him. That he should deceive the nation no more. Satan is going to be put out of the way. He won't be able to deceive the nation anymore. Till the thousand years should be fulfilled. All right. And after that, he must be loose a little season. He must be loose a little season. And I saw thrones. And I saw thrones. And they sat upon them. And they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. Talking about the saints of God. Judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Even the one that was beheaded for standing up for the word of God. They are going to get up in a resurrection. What is it? And which had not worshipped the beast, mm -hmm. neither his image. Neither his image. Neither had received his mark upon their forehead. Right. Or in their hand. Now in their hand. And they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. And they live and reign with Christ for one thousand years. And this is what this feast of tabernacle represents. This seven day feast represents the thousand year reign. When Satan will be bound and God is going to set up his kingdom right here upon earth. All right, what else is it? Blessed and holy is he had a part in the first resurrection. Say, blessed and holy as he is he who had a part in the first resurrection. On such the second death had no power. On such the second death has no power. Now, contrary to what mainstream religion teaches, there, there's more than one resurrection. Yes, the Bible yes. speaks of three resurrections, but here the Bible says, Blessed and holy is what? Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. In the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power. Now the second death has no power over the first resurrection. So if you get up in the first resurrection, you have made it. There is no power over the first resurrection. And the book of Hebrews 11 and 35 called this resurrection a better resurrection. And the reason why it's a better resurrection for the reason that Revelation just spoke that the second death has no power over it. Woman. Alright, read on. Woman received their dead raised to life again. Mm -hmm. And others were tortured. Others were tortured. Not accepting deliverance. Mm -hmm. That they might obtain a better resurrection. That they might obtain a better resurrection. So the ones that are striving, they're striving for this better resurrection. Now our time is out, but we want you to stay tuned and we're going to continue and we're going to show you this last great day and how all of God's feast days, they are pinned one on another to open up and give us the right understanding of God's plan of salvation for mankind. This is Minister Mixon saying bye now. Amen.